Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and it's been a year since the Juno spacecraft entered orbit around Jupiter. Now, uh, since then, things didn't quite go exactly as planned. The rocket motor that was supposed to put it into a shorter period orbit had some questionable functionality, so they decided to leave it in the longer orbit. Now, it'll still be able to do the full mission. The only downside is they have to employ the uh, scientists for a little bit longer. And frankly, I'm not really seeing that as a downside. But what I want to talk about are, are the new images that have come down. Now, it's made several low passes over the equator of Jupiter and returned some great images. One of the interesting things about Juno is the camera wasn't really part of the primary mission design and was added more or less afterwards as a public outreach opportunity. And as such, a lot of the image processing, a lot of the best images have actually come from the general public processing the raw data as provided by the mission. And just this last week, Juno flew low over the famous Great Red Spot of Jupiter. Providing the most detailed images of this feature, yet a giant storm large enough to swallow the Earth. Although data collected by Hubble does suggest that it has been shrinking over the last couple of decades. Now, prior to this pass by Juno, the best images have come from Voyager from the Hubble Space Telescope and of course from Galileo which did take amazing pictures it had a very good camera designed to image things however it had an antenna problem and at peak it was only able to return data at the speed of 160 bits per second Juno of course doesn't have this problem but with the primary mission focus being look at the, looking at the interior of Jupiter using other scientific instruments uh, the Juno cam is an interesting beast. It's not like a camera that can be pointed and focused and zoomed. It is a fixed camera that sits on the side of the spacecraft that has a 58 degree field of view and the whole spacecraft is spin stabilized so it rotates scanning out sections of the sky and therefore scanning out sections of Jupiter as it passes by. Now it's actually really interesting to talk about how this camera works. Image sensors normally are not color sensitive. They react to all colors of light. So if you use them normally, you would get everything from the near infrared to the ultraviolet. To produce color images, the consumer level cameras use what's called a Bayer mask. That is a very fine filter mask that gives, puts different colored filters in, different, in front of different pixels. So some pixels only have the red light passed and others only pass green, others only pass blue. And this is of course spread around the image so that they can actually build up a color picture. However, with JunoCam, the detector has multiple filter strips, right? Uh, they cover, they go all the way from one side of the sensor to the other and there's a red section, a green section and a blue section, right? So each section is about 1600 pixels wide, that's the width of the frame, and they're about 155 rows high. So these filter strips are lined up so that when the spacecraft rotates, these are scanned across the target by a spacecraft rotation. And that means that uh, you're taking a blue section, a green section, and a red section, all at slightly different times due to the rotation of the spacecraft. There's also an infrared methane filter as well in there that's used, but that's actually used on a separate imaging pass. But that's not all. The spacecraft is rotating quite rapidly. And for each row of the image, uh, after th about 3.2 milliseconds, the spacecraft has actually moved far enough that that is now in the wrong place. So normally, to avoid blurring, they would have to have their exposure time be 3.2 milliseconds any longer and they would get blurring due to the rotation. But out at Jupiter, the amount of sunlight is about one hundredth of what we would get on Earth. And using a 3.2 millisecond exposure would have terrible signal to noise. So they use advanced uh, features of the CCD imager. They, what they can do is they can electronically shift one image row across by one column. This is a technique called time delay integration. Uh, astronomers sometimes call it drift scanning, where you let the sky drift across your sensor and you shift the pixels inside the sensor at the same speed as the object is moving. 
Uh, think of it as like a shift register in a computer, but it's using a little bucket of electrons. And they're just copying that bucket from one uh, row of pixels to the next row of pixels. So they can do this across the entire sensor, shift the entire sensor along at exactly the same rate as the rotation. So as the spacecraft rotates, they can keep shifting the pixels, keep exposing the data in the same location. And then as it rolls off the edge of the band, which is for the specific color, they can then read that data off the side by shifting the pixels uh, in the other direction. So instead of being limited to 3.2 millisecond exposures, they can get 400 millisecond exposures, which is more than enough to provide these magnificent images of Jupiter. Another interesting consequence of this spin scan system is that the field of view is fixed. So the width of the image is always going to be 58 degrees, but the length of the image is going to be defined by whenever Jupiter comes into the field of view and leaves the field of view. And given that the spacecraft has a perigeove of about 4,200 kilometers, that means they can essentially scan for 180 degrees. I mean, given that Jupiter is about 10 times the size of Earth and the perigeove is about 10 times further away, from a perspective standpoint, the Jupiter would cover roughly the same area of the sky as uh, the Earth would cover from, uh, for an astronaut at the ISS. And it's also worth noting at this uh, altitude and this orbit, the spacecraft is moving at over 50 kilometers per second. So in the time that it takes between scanning the blue and the green and the red, there will be differences that show up because of the motion of the spacecraft. And you'll see in some of the images that there's some weird color fringing right at the very edges of the frame because they are, you know, the processing requires these to be stacked, but they're taken at slightly different times. The best views, however, are of Jupiter's poles. Previous spacecraft have never had a good look at the poles, and part of the optimization uh, require requirements for the camera system was that it would get really good images of the poles, and that's really where it excels. The amount of detail that we're getting out of these is amazing. So yeah, Juno is uh, producing some amazing images and it's also producing a lot of cool data about the interior of the planet. But I'm going to wait for the real science results before we actually start talking about that. Until then, I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.